from the side of government reforming our policy environment has been an important starting point. A major success was the approval by a cabinet a couple of months ago of the National Waste Management Strategy. This is a significant milestone in our fight against waste, especially plastic waste, because it emphasizes cooperative governance in the management of waste and the allocation of shared responsibility across all spheres of government in dealing with waste issues. More importantly, it reflects our ambitious goal of transitioning from a linear to a circular intervention. It is a strategy that emphasizes the need to reuse, reduce, recycle, and recover all waste. As highlighted in the National Management Strategy, municipalities have a large role to play. At the Waste Management Officers Horo in September this year, the need was emphasized for increased support and assistance for municipalities to extend waste services and take advantage of the opportunities being brought about by the Reconstruction and Economic Recovery Plan. We will be using the government's district model to expand and strengthen our municipal interventions to keep our country clean. The department is also assisting municipalities to apply for municipal infrastructure grant in order to com procure compacted trucks that aid in waste collection and landfill compactors for operation in landfill sites. On the 5th of November, I'm happy to announce today our department published the regulatory framework for extended producer responsibility schemes in our country. We have also published the Plastics and Packaging Extended Route Producer Responsibility Notice to provide for the post-consumer management of plastic products. The establishment of an extended producer responsibility scheme is informed by collaborative arrangements between the industry, government, micro enterprises and waste reclaimers. These schemes are part of the Reconstruction and Economic Recovery Plan recently announced by President Ramaphosa as key contributors towards the Green Economy initiatives. Annual targets for post-consumer waste management have been set and the producers will be accounting to the country each year on progress towards meeting these targets. We need to applaud the efforts of those producers who have committed to these targets even before the regulations were published. And with the scheme, we now hope to totally eliminate free riders in the system. Annual targets for post-consumer waste management Sorry, from the 1st of April 2020, National Treasury also ensured that the economic instruments demonstrate an aggressive government response to plastic pollution. The levy increased from 12 to 25 cents, and the interim comparative analysis of figures between September 2019 and September 2020 show a consumer decline of 6% in the use of plastic bags. This circular economy approach can be seen in the proposed amendments to the plastic bag regulations, which were recently published for public comment. In developing the proposed amendments, the department and the CSIR conducted studies to inform an evidence-based policy approach to all plastic carrier bags and plastic flat bags, so that by 2023, all of them include a minimum of 50% recyclate, with this being increased to 100% by 2027. The combined policy effect on the plastic bag is in line with sentiment of South Africans that our country requires more stringent control on plastic pollution. There are sectors of the South African community that are advocating for an outright ban. We are committed to working closely with the industry to avoid any unintended consequences as we explore alternatives to plastic bags to mitigate the resultant socio-economic impact. Our regulatory framework that we have published has been strongly influenced by the working groups that were set up at the colloquium 
and includes matters such as ensuring environmental labeling conform to acceptable South African Bureau of Standards standards and promote public awareness and influence greener choices on the part of consumers. Other standards that have been critical to the focus of the plastic colloquium are those of compostable plastics. If we look purely at figures, it is clear that action taken by government and the private sector are resulting in some positive change. In 2019, the total quantity of recycler used in local manufacturing was up to 337,000 tonnes, while in total 503,000 tonnes of plastic waste was collected for recycling. Last year, over 58,000 income opportunities were created and 2 billion was injected into the informal microeconomy sector. Especially relevant in terms of our green economic recovery in the aftermath of the pandemic, in 2019, plastic recycling is estimated to have saved 244,000 tonnes of carbon gas, the equivalent of 51,000 car emissions from entering into the atmosphere. Steps are being taken to finalize the plastic sector master plan and to make sure that one of the fundamental themes of this master plan is around plastic sustainability and circularity, where waste is neither landfill nor leaks into the environment, but that it is recycled and recovered. The Plastics Master Plan acknowledges the circular economy as a central policy precept, and it makes use of industrial policy to address plastic pollution as part of sustainable consumption and production. It also supports the sustained growth of the secondary materials economy. The plastics industry in South Africa has taken a lead in the search for solutions to plastic waste. The activities of Plastics South Africa and the Consumer Goods Council in championing the Zero Plastics Initiative is applauded. Through the private sector's efforts over the last year, the six working groups have been working hard to develop new policies and interventions. The effects and outcomes of these working groups have resulted in a number of encouraging developments. These include product design to facilitate recycling, investment in waste management infrastructure, and training for micro enterprises. A lot of work is also being done by the non-governmental sector. And these organizations have cons contributed to national and international activities aimed at assisting South Africa to respond to the impact of plastic waste. The International Union for Conservation of Nature has partnered with ourselves on research and development initiatives, and these are directed towards finding measures to support initiatives to combat marine pollution. Studies indicate that rivers contribute 10 to 20% of all ocean plastic every year. The Marine Plastics and Coastal Communities Initiative is led by the IUCN in South Africa, Kenya, and Mozambique, and uses an integrated life cycle approach which supports a global transition from a linear take, make, and dispose model to the circular economy. Another significant intervention is, is that of the South Africans Plastics Pact, led by the World Wide Fund for Nature and implemented through Green Cape. The pact brings together key stakeholders in the plastics value chain that include business, government, and the non-governmental sector behind a common vision. The intervention is aligned with global ambition of more than 400 signatories to the new plastics economy global commitment, all of whom are united behind a common vision of the circular economy.